We haven't quite got enough footage for a full Workshop Wednesday episode this week, unfortunately. But lately, we have been receiving a lot of requests to see more of the inside of the museum. So that's what we're going to do. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome to your guided tour of the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum. Starting on our left, we have our World War I guns. And on the right, we have some Cold War tanks. It may seem like a bit of a strange pairing, but it's actually kind of for convenience. We're moving vehicles all the time, and with these precious guns in the front corner, they're nice and out of the way, and the first thing that you see as you walk into the museum. This Centurion tank was the first armoured vehicle we acquired. It is a runner, but its petrol engine requires quite a bit of maintenance. You'll notice that quite a few of these World War I guns have rubber tyres. This is because they were upgraded from the old wooden wheels to fight in World War II. These glass cabinets are full of interesting things that have been donated and loaned to the museum. You can certainly spend a lot of time looking over it all. These field guns are war trophies from World War I, and were in a very poor state of repair when we received them. But Alan, who you'll remember from the Goliath restoration, has been working extremely hard and has worked wonders on them. We're still waiting for a few wheels from an outside contractor just to finish them off. Once we were offered a missile from Bulgaria, and so now we have a missile from Bulgaria. How could we refuse? This T-72 is one of the best running vehicles in the museum, and is extremely popular at Oz Armourfest. Now this is the 203mm Pion self-propelled gun. It's not really a runner at the moment, but it is high on the list. This is a Soviet artillery tractor. It has run at Oz Armour Fest before, and it's great fun for families and big groups of friends. But it's sprung a massive oil leak, and it's on the maintenance schedule for fixing. It is an absolute beast though. Another one on the to restore list is the Churchill Mine Flail Tank. The dream would be a live demonstration at Oz Armour Fest. It would take a lot of work, but boy would it be worth it. Now we're into some Soviet equipment like the BMP and BTR-60, all very recognisable, especially with recent events. Most of these are in excellent running condition. Now we're onto some Australian equipment. 
the classic AC-4 and recoilless rifle Land Rover. The AC-4 isn't running I'm afraid, and has no interior, but it's still a really great exhibit. This is a great example of the fate of many World War II tanks. This old Grand tank was shortened and modified by farmers in the 1950s. Some say it's a bit of a travesty, but at the time it was a really great practical use of this heavy machinery that wouldn't have otherwise been available to us. And here is our AC-1 Sentinel with its unique uh, machine gun housing. In all seriousness, the history and story of the Australian Sentinel cruiser tank is a truly fascinating one. Jason, our museum assistant manager, has even written a book about it and you can find the link for this in the description. Japanese equipment is really rare, but what little we do have is really interesting. The Hargo is very special. This one is on the restoration list for sure. Circling back now and we're into the modern vehicles again. These are all reliable and a lot of fun to ride and drive. This Australian Leopard is on loan from the Australian government. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to drive it. It's still a really cool tank to see up close though. Our next haul contains most of the allied World War II guns and armoured vehicles. It's also used for functions. The Firefly is the only runner out of this row of tanks, for now.
tank museum wouldn't be complete without a T-34. Its ISU-152 neighbour is also a real ground shaker. These are some of the less well-known Soviet armoured vehicles, like this T-26 painted as being captured by the Germans. These were all restored overseas, and are in various states of running repair. After World War II, US equipment could be found serving in armies all over the world, so a lot of things are quite prevalent. But countering this are large numbers of US collectors, so we are very fortunate to have some really terrific vehicles and guns here. the M4 Sherman. Unfortunately, not a runner at the moment. It's missing a few small parts, but these are extremely rare and hard to come by. Nonetheless, it's on the restoration list. The Grant and Lee tanks. Jason took us through a few differences between these vehicles in last week's video. Not having the doors here would be extremely unnerving. Don't call it a long tom for nothing. This is our ammo collection. Half of this belongs to the museum, and the other half belongs to Daryl from the workshop. 
He's an avid collector and passionate about militaria. It's a big job, but one day we hope to have everything labelled. But I'm sure there are plenty of enthusiasts out there watching right now that could probably name a lot of these just by looking at them. And now for what I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for. The German collection at the museum is pretty extensive and contains the most popular exhibits. Quite a few people commented about the Stalingrad Stug having the wrong colour paint scheme. Well, the scheme was actually copied from a contemporary colour photograph which showed it as this yellow tan colour. It seems unlikely, but there it is. The Panzer 4D is probably my favourite tank in the collection. Let us know what your favourite is, we'd love to know. There's usually a Panzer 4G in this space, but it's had to duck in the workshop for the day for maintenance. Daryl and Jesse restored this Panzer 4J to running condition. And Glenn and Bo did this Stug 4. This is a neat little exhibit. It's a comparison of links from all the different German tracked vehicles, from the Goliath to the King Tiger. This is a post-war Czech OT810. It was acquired from a collector who painted it up like a Wehrmacht half-track. There are several notable differences despite their similarity. 
chief among these are the folding doors on the roof. Fans of the channel will know this exhibit very well. Al did a fantastic job resurrecting this Goliath considering the state it came in. You can find the three-part series on a playlist in our channel. Imagine the force needed to blow up this turret. On the inside, you can see where the telemines were placed by post-war wreckers or possibly the crew. Hmm, this turret might come in handy soon. Now onto the crown jewels. Daryl and Jesse finished this Yag Panther earlier on in the year. It was our first restoration project, covered from start to finish on the channel. The Panther from Combat Dealers, restored by the twins Nick and Phil at Axis Track Services. And of course, Tiger 850771. Not running and no internals yet, but parts for this are at the very top of the list for acquisition. We're close, so keep an eye on the channel for any upcoming hints about when we might begin this incredible process. This shell is from the famous railway gun used by the Germans at Sevastopol. Just look at the size of it. We positioned these extra tiger parts around the vehicle so patrons of the museum could really get a sense of how thick the armour was. So there you have it. It would take forever to go through every single exhibit, but hopefully this gives you more of a reason to come and visit us. Thank you so much for watching. Next week we're back on track and we'll be presenting a long overdue Stug 3G restoration video.
So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armor, and I'll see you on the next one. Scared the s*** out of me.